Do you want to know what the best free transfers are in FM22? You do? Perfect. Because I'm about to go above and beyond that. I'm going to get the best free transfers, create a full team out of them, throw them into the Premier League, and see how they get on. You don't want to miss this. Okay, so the tactic we're going to go with is going to be a 4-2-3-1, primarily because most players are going to be able to fit into this tactic. But before we get into it, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you're hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that notification bell to be alerted where any of these videos are released. First player, goalkeeper. The first person on this list is going to be 39 years old Willy Caballero, probably the oldest player on this list but do not let his age put you off siding him because for a free he's an absolute bloody steal and you don't want to miss out on him and if we have a look at his attributes they're absolutely fantastic for someone that you can get for absolutely nothing 16 handling 15 command of area 14 communication he's a good passer of the ball as well so it potentially allows you to pass out from the back his mentals are pretty good as well 14 leadership so you could potentially have a leader in that dressing room the only negative potentially for Caballero is that 9 acceleration and 12 pace. But if you're not looking to play him in that sweeper-keeper role, that's probably not going to be much of an issue. Now, is he going to win you the league? No, of course not. But could he be a massive upgrade on your current keeper? Probably. So make sure you don't miss out on him. He's an absolute bloody steal. The first player to occupy that centre-back spot is 30-year-old six capped Argentinian Matteo Musacho. Musacho? I do apologise. I've definitely butchered that. I'm so sorry. But you can literally get this guy on a free. I cannot believe it. Recently released from Lazio, where he did join Milan previously for 15.75 million. And you can get him for absolutely nothing. And he's a great centre-back. He'll be able to do a pretty decent job in like a mid-table Premier League team. And you can get him for nothing. If you have a look at these attributes, he's got everything you want in a centre-back. He's relatively quick. The 13 acceleration, 13 pace. Strong as well, 14 strength. He's a good passer of the ball. So once again, you've got Willy Caballero behind you. He's a good passer of the ball. And you also have Matteo in that centre-back spot with 13 passing. You're building a team potentially that could play some beautiful football. 13 passing, 15 marking, 15 tackling, 14 heading. He's a really good defender and he's brave and he's aggressive. 17 in both of them attributes. He's composed and he's got that perfectionist personality as well. So he could potentially be a perfect shooter for any younger players you have in your team. And why wouldn't you get him? Do not do not lose out on this guy because you never know. You could actually get him in as well and sell him in a year's time because he's that that age where he's not too far gone in terms of getting a little bit of a profit. You can potentially get a few million from him. So if even if you don't want to play him, just get him. Get him out the door in a year's time. Oh, and another thing that's pretty cool. He's wanted by Juventus and Milan. So some big teams want him. Come on. Why wouldn't you? Now let's get on to another sense back. This one, ex-Manchester City player. Can you guess who it is? And if you guessed it correctly, congratulations. That player is indeed the ex-Manchester City player, Elwakim Mangala, a player that was expected to do great things when he arrived to the Premier League to Manchester City for £42 million. And his move was bitterly disappointing as he never really did anything of significance when at Manchester City. And since then, he's been on loan at Valencia and Everton, joining Valencia on a free before being released by them. And he hasn't played much football over the past few years. So he needs to go to a team that can resurrect the final few years of his career. Being 30 years old, that team could be yours. And why would you not pick him up? He's got eight caps for France, for God's sake. Powerful centre-back, 15 strength, 15 stamina, 13 acceleration, 13 pace. He's pretty decent physically. Mentally, he's okay as well. 16 termination, 14 work rate. He's brave and he's aggressive. You want your centre-backs going in. Going in for them opposition players. And then we look at his technicals. He's a good passer of the ball as well. You've got Caballero. We've got Matteo next to Mangala here. You are building a beautiful team that'll be able to pass fantastically well. Be able to ping them long balls over to the strikers. We'll get to them later. But this guy, for 30 years old, on a free, you're building a decent back line here. 
We've got Matteo, we've got Caballero, we've got Mangala. Who are our fullbacks going to be to partner these beautiful two centre backs and goalkeeper? So you want a team that can play lovely tiki taka football? You need to get in this man, don't you? Mr. Daniel Alves, the Brazilian legend, 119 caps for Brazil. He's unbelievable. Is there much to be said about this guy? Do I need to give any reasons as to why you should go out right now, get onto your FM and sign him? Maybe you need a bit of convincing. Although he's 38 years old, look at them attributes. They're absolutely terrific. He's got a great personality as well. 20 determination, the technique, the passing, the first touch, the crossing. The pace is still relatively good for being 38 years old. 13 acceleration as well, 18 natural fitness. So he's going to be able to play plenty of games. And for 38, I mean, there's not, there's no better fullback in world football right now that you can get for a free transfer that is over the age of 30, really, is there? Danny Alves is the best. And he can play a magnitude of positions all across the right-hand side. And he can play centre mid as well. And if you play this guy in an attacking role, like an attacking wing back, and you have a good striker that can bang in the goals. Daniel could get 5 or 10 assists if you're playing correctly. And he's absolutely superb. He's probably better than your current fullback that you have in your current team. So go out and get him. He's terrific. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have a player that was once voted the 27th best footballer in the world by Bloomberg. That's right. Random facts. You don't just get free transfers. You get random facts as well. And that man is Quadwo Asamoa. I believe I've got that name correctly. The ex-Juventus player uh, who played a lot of games for Juventus. He also played quite a lot of games for Udinese as well. And he is currently a free transfer. Now, he's not as good as Daniel Alves. And he's probably not going to have the same impact that Daniel Alves would have. But he's solid. He's not great. He's not absolutely superb. But he's a solid left back. And... If I'm honest, he's probably the weakest of the back four. Not, I'm sorry, Quadwo, I do apologise, but you probably are that. But he's definitely got some good attributes about him. He's a good crosser, dribbler, technique, good work rate. Physically, he's he's okay. 12 pace, 12 acceleration. Mentally, he's all right. Decisions, composure, bravery. He's just okay. He's got 16 positioning, so at least you can ask him to defend relatively well i mean with that 12 cross and 14 dribbling you could probably ask him to get down that left hand side but if you had to choose between daniel alves or asamoah in terms of impact in that final third i would go with daniel alves and just ask asamoah here to just sit back and defend be on the same side as mangala and just be an absolute rock in that defense so that is our back four and goalkeeper completed now we need two fantastic midfielders to be able to link the play between the defenders and the attackers. And the first midfielder that we are going to go with is going to be Mr. Injury Proness himself. Jack Wilshire is the midfielder we're going to be going with. He was recently released from Bournemouth, playing 14 games in the Championship. And he needs a brand new club. And he could be coming to your club and doing a pretty decent job. Like, don't get me wrong, physically... He's not brilliant. He is quite slow with that 10 acceleration and 9 pace. And obviously, the big standout is that Jack will suffer from injuries. So if you ask him to run, he'll probably get injured within two minutes. So just bear that in mind. But if you can play him in a role that doesn't require him to be that mobile, he's definitely got the technicals and mentals to do a really, really good job at maybe a bottom half Premier League team. If we have a look at the mentals... They're pretty impressive. Like, he's got good determination at 12. Work rate, teamwork, off the ball. 15 flair. Got 11 leadership. So maybe, once again, have a little bit of a leader in the side. Can maybe become a little bit of a stalwart in that dressing room. And if we look at his technicals, he's got good dribbling first touch, technique. He's not a great finisher of the ball. But in terms of set pieces, 11 corners and 11 free kick taken. So he could potentially be a little bit of a danger from direct or indirect free kicks but for someone that can get for absolutely free and he's only 29 years old as well so even if he doesn't play that much for you in the first season you're probably going to be able to make a little bit of a profit from well you will make a profit from him even if you're selling for two million he's worth getting just for you can sell him in a year's time for a little bit of money and reinvest that money into a better player so go out and get jack don't worry about his injuries just make sure you buy plenty of bandages and 
other medical supplies because you're probably going to need it with Jack. And the player that we're going to partner alongside Jack Wilshire is going to be that other mobile midfielder that we need to complement Jack because obviously he can't run. And that is going to be Nabil Bentaleb, a player that I want to say was quite highly rated when he was at Tottenham. I want to go as far as to say that he was a wonder kid maybe all them years ago in 2012, 13, 13, 14. I might be wrong about that. So leave in the comment section whether or not I'm right. But I want to say he was like a highly tipped prospect when he was at Tottenham. And he's been at Schalke for a number of years. Of course, he was at Newcastle uh, in the 1920 season. And he's been released by Schalke, but only played nine games in the Bundesliga. And for someone, once again, only 26 years old, so you can sell him on for a bit of money as well. Bentaleb is relatively decent, playing him in that maybe box-to-box -box role. He's got the work rate and stamina for it. He's got good natural fitness as well, so he's going to be able to play plenty of games. And he's got the pattern ability to be able to find them long-range passes and release an attacker, that being 14 passing and at 12 vision. He isn't much of a leader with only 10 leadership, but you've got plenty of other leaders in the side that will be able to do that. But I feel like the main thing about Bentaleb here and physicals physicals are really really good as i said that 14 stamina 12 acceleration jump and reach natural fitness pace strength is all there like it's not out of this world but it's decent you know it's not gonna absolutely shock anyone to the core but it's not absolutely horrendous and it's got that fairly ambitious personality as well whether or not you want players that are ambitious i don't know that'll be up to you he doesn't have any player traits he has tries tricks so if you want someone that's going to be causing chaos doing overhead flicks and kicky ups on the pitch this is your guy um and he has got 12 flair to complement that as well so that is going to be our two midfielders jack wilshire and near bill bentaleb bentaleb being that more mobile midfielder and jack being more that playmaker deep land playmaker type player that can release attackers and bentaleb can do that as well but two midfielders two very young midfielders 29 and 26 so you're going to have some younger players to bring that average age down considering the ages of some of the players on this list but now we need an attacker we need someone that's gonna cause chaos in the opposition area and i know who we're gonna go to so we've got mr injury proneness in our club in jack wilshire now we need mr controversial and our creative maestro in this team and that's going to be 37 years old carlos tevez being released from Boca in Argentina only this year. He is a free agent and he needs a club. And when he was in the Premier League with Man United City and obviously in Italy with Juventus, he was an absolute goal machine and used in the right system. I think Carlos can do a really, really good job in a team. As long as you don't ask him to run with that pace and acceleration, it's not brilliant. And of course, with being 37 years old, his physicals are going to deteriorate pretty rapidly. But if we focus on the technicals and the mentals, my god is he a very good creative player that passing that vision flair off the ball you got dribbling finishing first touch composure anticipation he's going to be able to get in the right areas to score some goals and he's also going to be able to help his teammates by releasing that left winger right winger and striker and getting them potentially and hopefully in behind the opposition back line now Obviously, he's 37 years old. He's not going to be playing for too much longer. You maybe get a year, two years out of him. But I honestly think that Carlos Tevez here, as long as you don't upset him, because we all know what happens when we upset Carlos Tevez, don't we, Roberto Mancini? But if you keep him happy, he can definitely get some goals and assists for you. So make sure you pick Carlos up. As I said, just don't upset him. Now, I won't lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, this next guy I haven't heard too much about. I haven't really heard of him around before. And this player is Federico Cartabia. Now, I do think that Federico here does complement Carlos Tevez quite a lot. Carlos being that quite stationary player looking for runners beyond. And Federico here can definitely do that. He's relatively quick with 15 acceleration and 13 pace so potentially be able to get behind the lines and he's a pretty deadly finisher as well 17 dribbling 13 finishing 15 first touch and 12 composure so he's going to be able to get quite a few goals uh, with your team if he gets the right play behind him to thread him through behind the lines if we have a look at his history he hasn't played that many games actually in 28 only playing 205 games which sounds a lot but I don't necessarily think that is a lot of games, really. He hasn't really cemented himself at any team. He played two years at the UAE. 
And being only 28 years old, he could cement himself as a club legend at your team. 16 flair, 16 technique. A bit of a playmaker as well, actually. 14 passing and 15 vision. The only issue with Federico here, he's a little bit lazy. He likes to chill out. He likes to not do much. 8 work rate, 10 determination and 18 work. And he's got a balanced personality, which isn't the worst. But, I mean, if you're looking at personalities, balanced is one of them. You're a bit like meh you know it's not great not not great not terrible but yeah this is a guy i think you should get him once again you could potentially sell him on in a few years time and he, i do think he'll complement colos tevez very very well right on to the next side right then so i won't lie to you ladies and gentlemen there weren't that many brilliant left wingers i won't lie to you the best i could find was mohammed baluli a 21 year old Frenchman, left winger, can also play in Cam. And he's not great, is he? He's not particularly brilliant. Physically, he's okay. Technically, he's just meh. He's a very meh player. He is currently wanted by a few teams, uh, all of which are in the second division of France. So that probably says a lot about the quality of Mohamed here. No offence. Uh, what about his history? He was recently released from Sampdoria. And he hasn't... He didn't play any first team uh, matches for Sampdoria or Leon, being on loan the past two years where he did play 24 games in the second division of Italy now definitely the weakest link in the attacking sort of side and he's definitely probably definitely the weakest link on our entire side I won't lie to you but he's the best left winger you can probably get on a free he's not great but you might be able to progress him a little bit get a little bit more out of him at being only 21 years old probably has a little bit of potential to me as well so that is our left winger, our cam and right winger done. And now the, mo the, the best part of your attacking side is your striker. There was a lot of strikers this year that were free transfers. Plenty. Andy Carroll is one of them. It's not Andy Carroll. But it's someone that's just as tall as, as Andy Carroll. And he has played for Tottenham. Can you guess who it is? And the final player on this list is going to be our star striker. The 36-year-old Fernando Loriente that we have to rely to bang in all the goals for our side. Currently sitting at 6 foot 3, 17 jump and reach, 16 strength and 18 balance. The friendly BFG, hopefully the lethal finisher that we need. And with that 13 finishing and 15 composure, he can definitely do that. With his height, there's not going to be many players that could be able to jump above him. And if used correctly, get the right balls into the box. Fernando could be very, very clinical. 15 technique, good passing. As I said, good finishing and composure. And he's a good team player as well with work rate, teamwork and determination. All pretty good. He's a good leader as well, which he always won. However, he is 36 years old, so his physicals are going to take a little bit of a hit naturally. He's not the quickest with 7 acceleration and 9 pace. So you are going to have to rely on the other players around him to do the running in behind but if you're looking to play that very direct football you want that striker just to throw onto the pitch and just ask him to head flick ons try and get people behind the opposition then this is your man and this is the guy that we're going to rely on to get all the goals and that does bring us to our full 11 a very exciting full 11 let's go and take a look Okay, so the tactic we're going to be using for this simulation is going to be a custom tactic over on FM Base. The link to this tactic will be in the description. And the reason I'm using a custom tactic is just because I want to give this team the biggest advantage we can give for them to actually not get relegated. Because, as you can see, the team isn't particularly great. So we are going to be going with a 4-2-3-1. Uh, all the players are in the side. The team that we've replaced is Brighton. Um, so I do apologise, Brighton. You no longer exist. Now, of course, there are a lot of other players with a creator club. You can't not have like uh, 21 players, 20 players, is it, for a Premier League season. So all of these won't be getting used. I'll be holidaying for the full season asking them to use the same players and the same tactic of course there is the chance that these might come off the bench i'll try to avoid that as much as i can if i can i don't really think i can but uh these lot this 11 is going to be the full 11 that is going to be playing for the majority of the season i'm starting in every game now before we simulate a year forward put in the comment section where you think this team will finish do you think we'll get immediately relegated or do you think we'll actually do something and surprise a few teams right then a year forward I'll see you in a second.
And if you predicted us to get relegated, unfortunately, you would be right. The free agents have not done themselves any justice. We are relegated from the Premier League. However, I'm going to take small victories, everyone. We weren't in 20th place. That honour goes to Watford. So, Watford, you should be ashamed. You literally came lower than a team that I got for absolutely bloody nothing. But 19th place, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't expecting us to actually not get relegated. At a point in the early on in the season, we were actually as high as 10th. And I was like, oh my God, is Lorente about to be worth about 50 million and get the Ballon d'Or? Didn't happen, obviously. But if we have a look at some of the player stats, Fernando Loriente did lead the line, of course, and he got himself 13 goals. And what I have just realised... <laughs> That the highest average rating throughout the entire season was our goalkeeper. So that probably says a lot about how much we were under the cosh for most of the 38 games. Uh, the most assists do go to uh, Carter Beer with only five assists. That's really, really underwhelming, actually. You'd expect with the amount of attacking players that we have in our side, you'd expect a few more assists, but apparently not. Uh, Mangala with the best pass completion. Man of the match award goes to Caballero Tevez. Actually, 1 1 Lorente. Carter Bia and Asamo. I'm surprised that Lorente didn't get the most man of the match awards considering that he got 13 goals. Uh, yellow card, Ben Sleb and Danny Alves. And most red. Wow, we got four red cards. Jack Wilshire getting himself sent off. Surprised in the in I'm surprised he didn't injure himself on the way off the pitch. But hey ho. Uh, if we have a look at the other stats, um, I mean, one thing that probably didn't help us was the fact that to make it as fair as possible, I didn't include any decent. Like substitutes, I just went with our full 11 just to make sure that if I, my, when I was simulating, if I got sacked, they didn't really have any other option but to play these full 11. If we have a look at the transfer value, Mangala is the highest valued player between 5.4 and 7.2, Baluli between 1.9 and 5.6, and Daniel Alves between 1.3 and 2.8. So I would say there's quite a lot of money to be made. You could probably expect to get maybe 10 million by selling some of these players. Uh, which is pretty decent when you consider that, well, you got them on a free, right? Uh, if we have a look at some of the games that we did win, how many games did we actually win this year? We won four games. So then games were against Manchester United. Oh my God. We beat Manchester bloody United. I cannot believe it. 2-1. How, how battered did we get in this game? Out of curiosity. Yep. Yeah, we got we got absolutely destroyed. That's fine. But we beat them. We beat Manchester United. So we could go down to the championship now and be like, hey, Manchester United. Yeah, so you didn't beat in that 38-game Premier League season. That's right. The free agents. Carlos Tevez returning to his old club and absolutely annihilating them. You'd love to see it. We then did lose to Arsenal. So for every advantage that well for every good there's a bad right uh but yeah that is going to bring us to the end of the video uh, of course feel free to leave in the comment section what you thought of this video and if you did enjoy it hit that like button that subscribe button and notification bell to be alerted when these videos are released i'd very very much appreciate it and you know like i said leave a comment did you get your prediction right did you expect us to get relegated i expect most people are probably going to say yes but thank you so much for watching take care and i'll see you in the next video.